to work on this next series of three hands and eyes. Uh, this next series is for healing. Now, don't jump to conclusions and think if you do these hands and eyes, you will cure all illnesses and you will cure your illnesses, no matter what sickness is out there. That's not actually the point. See, it's not that you do the hands and eyes for healing uh, sickness and, and, and illnesses and whatnot, and, and you will be totally fine and healthy, 100%. It might work. It might not work. What makes the mantras work, <clears throat> excuse me, and what makes the mudras work is your ability to maintain concentration, your willpower, your focus. They are just tools to help you put your attention in the specific place for the intent of that practice. For example, if I have pain in my lungs, um, depending on how intense the, the, the issue is, okay, let's just say general like cramping or pain soreness or whatever, I would work on breath work to exercise the lungs and put more attention at the lungs mental, mentally so the body will get into or and the mind and body will get into a deep state of relaxation so the body can heal itself. Remember the vagus nervous system is that less than digest. When you are calm and at peace your body can heal. When you are stressed and anxious, your body does not heal well. So it's not just of taking medicine to heal yourself. With medicine, it's also where your mind is. Okay? So number one, if you're sick, go get checked out by a doctor. <laughs> your Chinese medicine doctor, Ayurvedic doctor, your Western medicine doctor, it doesn't matter. Go get checked out and go get straight, clear information, tangible information that tells you what your sickness is. Then medicine, follow the doctor's orders, or you make your own decision, and also practice. Do exercise that helps your body feel better and your mind feel better. Okay? So I'm not going to claim, I will never claim a practice will 100% make you better. None of the practices I do come with a tag that says this will cure illnesses. It doesn't. I will never say it. But it has helped me in my pains, in the bodies, and when I've gotten sick, I've practiced mudra and mantra, or I've practiced certain exercises, <clears throat> excuse me, breath work and movement that helped me feel a lot better. Okay? That is just in my experience. So, um, if you are sick, again, go seek help. If you want to add in something that you can practice for your mind, body on top of whatever the medicine you are requested to take uh, to fix yourself, please, by all means, do it. And we have to be mature and smart about it, not just go off on any any end and say, yes, I'm just going to run five miles and my pain in my chest will be gone, or um, I have a knee, knee surgery and I'm going to put my hand on my knee and mantra and mudra it until it's fixed. I could go get surgery and fix your knee if you need the surgery and you work with everything afterwards like sometimes the responses you get that can help you come in different forms so let's say you're doing a mudra for um your fever right let's say you got a fever and you want to work on one of the mudras that we have today that we do. and you're practicing and practicing and you don't feel your fever is getting better for the practice not even the medicine you're taking is helping you, but someone decides to say, hey, why don't you try ibuprofen, or why don't you try something? And you take that something, and it makes you feel better. Your fever drops, your sickness goes away, and in two days you know you feel fine. The mudras and mantras in your mind, and all things in terms of the power of attraction and all that, it works on the it works under the premise that everything flows or comes through in your life like it happens normally every day. It's not going to be some magical thing that just appears and says, Hey, this is going to work. Take this. Boom, you're healed. No, it goes in gradually. Why? Because we experience life gradually. Like we go through a whole life. We have our own specific perspectives. 
Like, there's nothing outside of that. There's nothing outside your mind. So everything will come in according to your mind. It's not just going to be, oh, I did a mudra. Now I feel great. You probably would feel good because you rested, you relaxed, you put your mind in one specific place and you did not let yourself wander. That's beautiful. And that would bring healing because you're not expending your energy on everything else. Your energy is staying here. You're not sprouting it out and radiating it out to this memory and that emotion and this person did that and this situation and whatever. So you're not wasting your energy on those other things. You're simply just keeping your mind, your energy, your emotion in one space. And that saves it from being wasted. What do you do with a fully charged power in your body or fully charged battery? It has great charge. What do you use it? You plug it into something and it feels wonderful. It, or the, the, the thing you're using, the battery, and like that machine or whatever, is working. And it's working great. Same thing with your mind and your emotion and your body's energy. All of this one thing. Focus in one space. Not wasted on flipping thoughts and, and false thinking and crazy thinking or any type of thinking, except one thing, <laughs> one specific intent. All that energy that would have been wasted is now in one space. And that strong that strength and that strong potential can be utilized in your body. And it can offer you good feeling. So it can help relieve your mental stress, which helps relieve your body's stress, and vice versa. In so doing, you might feel experiences where you feel a little bit better. And that's good. So by no means do mudras and mantras um, take place of any real full medical treatment, be it any type of medicine you go for. If you can't get any other medicine out there in the world, and that's all you can do, then you just do that until you're better, hopefully, right? But these are other options that you can do to help focus your mind and really so we're going to get into three different types of hand, hand and eye practices that can help alleviate your stresses, your fears and anxieties in way of illnesses. If your mind is at ease, your body will feel at ease and then you will feel better. It might not be 100% better, but it'll be like 3% better, 5% better. It really depends on your mind. Okay? So you put yourself to practice the tool, you apply yourself in that practice, and you get the results. And I have to give this commentary because I need everyone to understand. Just because a specific meditation tool or a practice of the mind, like a mudra and mantra, have an intent or have a specific function, it doesn't mean it's going to work. It has to really rely on your mind. If you are fixed in making this happen, you have no doubts, you are also leading a healthy life, or you're leading a life of ease, calm, acknowledgement, appreciation, like you have to. Why? Because positivity breeds positivity. So if you're not in this well-rounded state of mind to be a positive person, <laughs> you're not going to get the positive benefits <laughs> of things that you're doing. In, in, in regards to mantra and mudra. It's not like they're not going to work because you're a jerk off. It's not that. <laughs> okay, what it means is if you're wasting your energy and putting it in ways that take away from you and degrade you, you will not get, you will not attract the benefits of those things which build you up. It's pretty simple. Like attracts like. So remember that. Keep a well rounded, the daily practice for yourself, checking your mind, okay? Not letting yourself wander and waste your energy on things that take away from you. Then you might find a better benefit because the mudras and mantras are only like tools. The real power from those mudras and mantras is your mind. So if you're not getting the desired result from them, it's definitely you. It's not the tool. So. You really have to practice them. When will you get a response from the mudra mantra? It's coming from your mind. So the response you're looking to gain is actually coming from you, not from the mudra mantra. They're just the direction, the tool, the magic wand, the tool, 
but the, what's fueling the one, what's fueling the tools is you, your mind. So if you're doubting, you're defeating the purpose. And if you're just blindly believing, you are still defeating the purpose, because blindly believing is not actually your power. When you believe something blindly, it is not your power, your true will. It is just your belief in something where you don't have substance behind that belief. Like you don't know why that belief. You don't know how that belief. You just believe it because it's, it fits your idea. No. You want to have full, true skill in these. And in order to get that needs to practice. Don't believe just because someone tells you it's going to work. I'm not telling you it's going to work. I'm saying it po possibly will work. Depends on where you are. Okay? I've been practicing for a very long time. So some methods work faster for me than it would for someone else just learning it who doesn't have my past behind it to help, help them along. I'm giving you the method. It's your job to actually practice them. And eventually something good will happen. understand that ah. so we'll begin on the three different uh, mudras and mantras for relieving illness sickness and pain from illness and to feel greater and better in body and mind but you must practice them now it can help relieve some of your pains and illnesses and pains in illness pains in sickness pains in frustration, anger, and, and all those fun things, okay? But you have to practice. Yeah. Okay, so here we are with the first of three hands and eyes for healing in terms of healing, uh, relieving tension in your mind, relieving a pain from illness in the body, and uh, stresses and, and, and all that. So. Just remember, refer to the first video, which is the intro to this set. Okay, the intro to this set really goes deep into how and why these mantras. Remember, they're not cures, they are aids. Aids in helping you put your attention where you need it so you can feel better. And great, so just refer to that and let's continue with what we have to do here. Uh, this set, uh, this set of three, Focus on developing your mind so you can bring better healing to your body and your mind itself. So the first one that we're going to look at, and we do them in this order, specific order, is the sweet dew hand and eye. Now there's so much to say for every single of the 42 hands and eyes, uh, especially the, these three that we're working on. So I'm not going to go into full out commentary on each specific hand and eye. I'm going to make this fully accessible to you. If you want more information, please feel free to call me or text me. All the information will be at the end of this uh, series. So, the sweet do hand and eye. Let's say you feel sick, you have a fever, or starting to get a fever. Um, I'm just giving a scenario, okay? Someone else is sick, but I want you to put it for yourself. Don't do this for other people just yet, okay? Um, a little hint there. <laughs> so, you work on this hand and eye when you're feeling very warm, uncomfortable, even stressed, anxious, uh, angry, frustrated, <clears throat> you can work on this one. Take our right hand, we imagine an eye from the middle of the palm to the heel of the palm. Okay? One corner to the other corner. And you rest that over your head, your, your right hand. Now you take your other hand, your left hand, and you bring your fingers in a little, you touch your thumb to the second knuckle after the fingernail. So you have one, two, and you touch that and you leave it here. So you have your hand rested over and you have this hand here. Remember, this is the sweet do hand and eye. So, here's your mantra. Sulu sulu nan, sulu sulu, bola sulu, bola sulu, sulu sulu ye, samaha. Sulu sulu nan, sulu sulu, bola sulu, bola sulu, sulu sulu ye, sawaha. Sulu sulu nan, sulu sulu, bola sulu, bola sulu, sulu sulu ye, sawaha. Thank you. 
So remember, when you're reciting this mudra and mantra, you are maintaining imagery that there's an eye here, that your hand is here. You're holding your posture of the other hand in the center of your body. And you recite and hold the image of that. Okay? When you recite, after three times reciting, you stay in the posture. And when you feel yourself coming out of that focused state, go back to recitation again. And do this all together three times. Okay? Three times. Now, you can imagine, as you're doing this, that you yourself are being showered with sweet dew. A water that smells great, um, tastes great. <laughs> okay? I'm not going to tell you what it should taste like. I'm not going to tell you what it should smell like. I'm not going to tell you what you should feel like. Will never instill those suggestions to you. I want you to find your own experience in your practice by yourself that means much more to your practice and development and skill than it does just to say, oh, I did feel what he said I should feel. I don't want that. I want you to feel better. I want you to feel good. And I want you to develop strength in your life. So you can imagine this sweet dew is pouring over you and going inside of you and filling you up like it's filling a fish tank. Filling you up from the you know, pouring down, filling up from the bottom, and engulfing you in sweet dew. That's awesome. So you can maintain that focus while you're doing this hand and eye. All right, now we're going to move on to the next hand. pains of sicknesses and illnesses <clears throat> and remember always refer to the intro to this series which goes into full detail of hows whys of these mudras and mantras okay you need that so you need to check on that before following through with the rest of them <laughs> okay so this one is the pure vase pure vase hand and eye or the kundika bottle hand and eye um you want to utilize this as though you are storing or holding the sweet dew. So the first hand and eye we just worked on, sweet dew hand and eye, you can imagine that this is where the sweet dew is stored. Also, like you're going to put in there, fill the bottles. So when you're reciting this hand and eye and holding um, the Mudra Mantra in your mind, excuse me, you will be as though you're having sweet dew stored into this bottle. So that's good, because when we move on to the visualization practice, you'll understand. Okay, and then the third hand and I, uh, in this series, you'll understand why we have the bottle. <laughs> okay, so we're going to unite with um, our mind, our body, and our emotion with this hand and I. Okay, <clears throat> so it is like we are uniting, sealing, and holding our mind. Uniting our mind, our body, and our emotion. Um, or put it this way, mind, body, and mouth. <laughs> Sealing, meaning seal, like to lock up something. Locking our body, mind, and mouth. Like everything is focused in one space. And holding, holding our attention in one space. So we're kind of like building up and maintaining our attention and focus. So with this one, you're using, you're using two hands. The right hand's going to hold the bottle. So it's as though you're holding a bottle like this. Okay? Here is where you'll have an eye appear. Okay? That appears here. The left hand, you're going to bring your thumb right underneath the last creased knuckle of your ring finger. So you have the, your nail, you have the first knuckle, second knuckle. So you're going to go right on the second knuckle there. You're going to hold it right here on your lap. The mantra. Tola, tola, na. So in holding this mudra and mantra, because you're holding in your mind, right? You're holding your body, so these two are together. You <clears throat> are imagining that there is sweet dew in that bottle. 
and it's building up strength and focus for moving throughout your body. Remember, this bottle appears only because of your mind, your attention here, holding the imagery, holding the eye, holding your mudra and mantra. This is all because of your mind. So it's function to feel calm, cool, and peace, right? Uniting the mind, sealing the mind, and holding the mind. Making sure you are in one zone to get something done. Coupled with the sweet dew hand and eye, you're getting something done. You're now putting in sweet dew into the bottle for its use. Not that you can sit there and imagine yourself drinking. You're already saturated yourself with sweet dew. The longer you hold yourself in that state, the greater and better your response will be. Remember, it's your mind and your body that you're working on. It's not something else coming over and saying, oh, here you go, I'm gonna help, I'm gonna heal you up. No, 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 no. It's all you. Now the bottle holds the Holds it. Holds the sweet dew. That's all of you, that bottle. All these hands and eyes are all of you. So when you're holding this image, it's all you. Okay. Holding the mudra, that's you. Holding the mantra, that's you. <laughs> so you hold this bottle, it comes out from you. You are the storehouse of this. So understand there's nothing separate. They're just tools to help develop and focus your mind for a specific function. All right, now here we are in our last hand and eye for this series, the third one called the Willow Branch Hand and Eye. Now, this is also a very special one. Of all the 42 hands and eyes are very special. Uh, for this series, each hand and eye have their specific function. But because I put them together in this way, Sweet Dew Hand and Eye, Pure Vase Hand and Eye, and the Willow Branch Hand and Eye, they are functioning as one specific unit. So you're utilizing them for one specific idea. They all have similar characteristics. Uh, however, they would have a specific function individually. But however, we're putting them together to create one major outcome. So the Willow Branch Hand and Eye, let's call it the Liberation Hand and Eye. Okay, the Liberation Hand and Eye in this concept where you are freeing yourself from your conditions of stress, sickness, and illness of your mind, okay? So if you are in belief that you are going to die, if you are in belief that you are going to be sick or this is horrible, and you're putting on all these narratives about how your experience truly is, this hand and eye aids your mind, and aids you in the aspect of relieving yourself from that type of negative thinking and becoming free from that specific type of negative thinking. If you are free from that negative thinking, you're neurochemistry is not working to give you the neurochemical responses to equate in the emotional experience and physical experience of feeling like crap. Okay? You would feel better. So the Willow Branch Hand and Eye is that called the freedom hand and eye. And it's free from these thoughts that keep you from feeling sick. So it's like, for example, you can have a cold, have itchy throats and congestion of the lungs and a headache and you're telling yourself, oh, I feel like crap, and uh, I feel sick, and the life is horrible, and all these negative things, but you're just compounding onto your already bad feeling experience. What if you didn't have those thoughts about that experience? All you will feel is fatigued and tired, and a little bit of pain because you feel horrible physically. You get it. But you're not adding to that. You're not deluding yourself, saying, oh, I feel wonderful, I'm great. I, I, no, you're not doing that either. You are needing to stay very clear on what is happening. Just because the body feels sick doesn't mean you have to equal that sickness with more negative thinking about it. So you feel sick, great, feel sick, that's it. That's it. There's nothing else. And so, right? So the Willow Branch Hand and I is going to help in that sense where you feel at ease with this type of sensation. The pains of sickness is not just physical, uh, but very much mental, okay? So you have your sweet dew hand and eye, you have your kundika or your pure vase hand and eye, now you have the willow branch hand and eye. And the willow branch is what you dip into the bottle and sprinkle around to relieve yourself from all this frustration, stress, and 
narratives that just burn you up and make you sick on top of how you already feel. Okay? So let's get to it. <laughs> First, the hand, the mudra. I'm going to take your right hand, holding it up, touching your thumb and middle finger together, letting your fingers be loose like this. Right here, you're going to imagine an eye appear. Left hand, thumb over the uh, second knuckle on the inside of your hand. So from the tip of your ring finger, first knuckle, second knuckle, it's going to sit there and you're holding that here. Okay, and ready for the mantra. This is a very long one, so bear with me. Mudi li yenan, sushi di, jali wali, duanan duo mu bo yi, wazala wadala, pan po, honan honan hong pan jia. Mudi li yenan, sushi di, jali wali, duanan duo mu bo yi, wazala wadala, pan po, honan honan hong pan jia. Mudi li yenan, sushi di, jali wali, duanan duo mu bo yi, wazala wadala, pan po, honan honan hong pan jia. Wonderful. <laughs> so, we have now all three. When you want to practice all three, you do them one right after each other. Three times on the uh, sweet dew hand and eye, three times on the kandika bottle hand and eye, and three times on the willow branch hand and eye. And then you sit in that state and let the work happen. I was going to say, let the magic happen, but it's not magical as a mystical outside thing. This is all you. This is all your mind, all your body. You are so powerful. And it just takes you to put yourself into the work and give yourself the tool that can harness your potential. So remember, the easing of your pains and sickness and illnesses and stress in fear and frustration and in anger, you can use these three. And you use them one right after each other and practice them daily. Don't let go of them. These are really amazing treasures. If you need any more commentary or guidance on utilizing these hands and eyes from our very first set for fear and anxiety, okay, and now with the healing and relieving yourself of illnesses and stresses of illnesses of your mind. If you need any more commentary on that, feel free. My email is at the bottom of the screen. And you can find us at Instagram, The Awakened Journal. And you can find us at the Awaken24 Facebook community group. Also, ericoliva.com. Our website will be there at the end, uh, bottom of the screen. And Twitter at awaken underscore 24. Remember, if you need any more commentary, any more guidance, any more help on these, please feel free. And believe me, there's so much more to talk about on them. But remember, also, again, these things are not there to cure you at, at all. They're not there, uh, you really gotta be clear. Take medicine, go to a doctor, get clear on what your problem is. Practice these accordingly, meaning practice them daily same time every day building up momentum you will feel according to your mind do not blindly believe wholeheartedly investigate come to your own conclusions over a long period of time of investigating meaning practicing they do help me feel better and that's my experience with them so I want to pass them on to you hoping that you will also find benefit in these practices. Awesome. Thank you.